and minds are clear. Let us go to the throne of God for the blessings of giving. Father God, we come this morning. <clears throat> Thank you for giving us the ultimate gift that's your son, Jesus Christ. And you said in your word, give and it shall be given back unto you. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. Father God, we come in this morning to saying thank you for those that have to give. Most bless those that have it not to give that when they come to uh, come into the abundance of blessing that you've given, that we will be able to give back to you your requirements that we shall give, uh, because it is better to give than to receive. And Father God, we thank you for giving us the, uh, the uh, gift of life, uh, the gift of rest, the gift of uh, ability to walk, see, and believe. And Father God, we just thank you for everything you've done for us. And it's... Uh, small token that we would give back to you as you requested. We ask you to bless those that have it to give and that you will take these gifts and Father God, multiply them, that we can go out and show your word throughout the world, that uh, those that know you're not will be able to receive you and know that you are still on the throne and that you will bless those that bless you. And these blessings we ask your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 We thank Trustee Davis for all to prayer. Well, Ebenezer Baptist Church, it is preaching time. It is preaching time. It is preaching time. At this time, as a brother Bill Hart is preparing to come in his own way for the hymn of preparation, I want us to be praying 
interceding on behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Albert P. Jackson. And as he is prepared to give you a word on how he's going to share with us in public what God gave to him in private. So after another selection, the next voice you shall hear will be the preacher of our, our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Albert P. Jackson. Let us receive them in his own way. Amen.
virtually, even physically, now is the time to come before the throne of grace. With every head bowed, every eye closed, Father, we call on you. The one who has been a very present help in our time of trouble, we call on you, O oh Lord. The one who was and is and is to come, we call on the great I am. I have a load sharer, our midnight rider, our wheel in the middle of the wheel. We call on you, O oh God, to be for us our shield and our buckler, to be for us the lover of our souls, to be for us the lifter up of our heads, we call on you. We're calling on you on behalf of Sister Delora Dillard, we're calling on you, oh God. Passing of her sister, we're calling on you for that entire family with calling on you for the Saunders family, God. Lord, we're calling on you. We're lifting up Deacon Anderson and his brother-in-law as he had to lay sister-in-law to rest. God, we're calling on you, oh God. God, we want to remember Sister Michelle Gray and Reverend Gray as she had to bury her father, Lord God. You know all about it. We're calling on you right now. For those loved ones that have gone on. Maybe it wasn't this month or last month, maybe it was last year. Two, three, four, five, ten, twenty years ago, and we're still breathing. We're calling on you to wipe every tear away from our eyes. To help help us to continue to press. Paul said, I'm pressed, but I'm not crushed. And I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor height, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God. We say thank you for your love. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your provision. Thank you, oh God, for your protection. We call on you right now to be with us. Even enter into this worship experience. Move not by power nor by might, but by your spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Someone needs to see Jesus. Someone needs to feel his power. Someone is suffering right now it needs to know that it's all right. Equip us for the journey ahead. Prepare us for the lifting that needs to be done. Help us to draw closer to you. For you said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Touch, save, deliver, and set free. In the mighty and awesome name of Jesus Christ, we pray. The body of believers said together, amen, amen, and amen. Come on, give the Lord a thunderous and clap of praise right where you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God be praised. We thank God for the time that we have together. We thank God that God has called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. I'm excited uh, because as one of us goes forward, all of us go forward. 
Um, this pandemic family has taken a toll on all of us. Ministry no longer looks the same. Ministry, as we have done it in the past, we cannot go back, but we must move forward. And as I sat on my couch, I think I shared this testimony and asked this congregation to pray for your pastor. It was in 2020 that I heard the Lord say the words pastoring in a pandemic. He said it to me again, pastoring in a pandemic. And, and I said, so Lord, it, it sounds like that's a book. It, it sounds like it's more than just a sermon. And, and the Lord said something that's right. I, I want you to write. I, I want you to get it out. And I said, Lord, I just have one caveat. Can I share this vision, this idea? with other individuals, other pastors in the DMV. Because as I'm talking, as I'm sharing, seminary didn't prepare us for the pandemic. Hallelujah. Nothing except the Holy Ghost was able to get us to this point and through some other valleys that, that we've experienced as a collective so it was in the year 2020 that the Lord uh, birthed pastoring in a pandemic. And I, I believe I reached out to about 13 or 14 other pastors to lift up their voices. And I'm here as a living testimony to tell you that when you do it God's way, he answers your prayer. Hallelujah. I, I bless the Lord. I bless the Lord. Why are you sharing your testimony? I'm sharing it because somebody may be sitting on their gift in Ebenezer Baptist Church. And I want to let you know that if the Lord can use this little peasy head boy from East Baltimore, hallelujah, who, whose guidance counselor told him, you're not college material, and now I have an earned doctorate, an earned master's, an earned bachelor's degree. Nobody but God can bring this to pass. So that, that's for any hater out there, whether you're hating on yourself, come on, God, hallelujah, can write and birth some things in you. So on the screen, I thank God for Sister Yvonne. She, she pushed me to, to share my testimony. My testimony is the, look what the Lord has done. Pastoring in a pandemic. It's available. Thank you, Sister Yvonne, on Amazon, on iTunes, on Barnes and Noble. I, I praise God that my pastor, Reverend Dr. Lloyd T. McGriff, is a part of this work, that Dr. Leonard M. Smith is a part of this work, that Dr. Henry P. Davis is a part of this work, and the list goes on and on and on of pastors who had to pastor in this pandemic. Family, it's not just for pastors or ministers, but it's for Lottie, Dottie, and anybody who wants to be blessed. I encourage you to get that, get that book, amen. I believe it is God breathed. I believe it will bless your life, hallelujah. Not, not only that, but I want us, come on, give God some praise. Don't have hate, let's congratulate, let's celebrate what God is birthing, even at Ebenezer Baptist Church, amen. But, but on this coming March, um, we will be having uh, our revival. It's a limited revival. I was blessed to be a part of it on last year. I, I was blessed. Uh, this LinkedIn revival uh, that, that is launching March the 3rd and going through April 14th. And so typically 
we would do our own revival. We'll do a spring revival and we would do a fall revival. Well, in the midst of the pandemic, the Lord has birthed something even before the pandemic, but the Lord has birthed uh, a uniting of churches, uh, a uniting of uh, across the lines of Virginia, Maryland, as well as D.C. And, and so each Thursday night, the Lord will bless us starting March the 3rd through April the 14th, Monday, Thursday, with a word from the Lord. You don't want to miss it. Social media will have it up. We'll, we'll link it. Hallelujah. So that you might, the way you're listening to it now, will make it available to you. You don't want to miss what the Lord is doing. Uh, uh, we will be a host church. Last year, we were able to be one of the revivalists, but this year, it's our year to host. And so we praise God. Uh, Pastor Heatley, uh, another brother in Alexandria, the, the Shiloh Baptist Church will be preaching as well. The Lord is going to have his way. Uh, the oil of the Lord, the anointing of God, is on this revival. You want to be a part. This is the LinkedIn revival, uh, and it is hosted uh, by Omegas. We praise God that we're able to put ego to the side. Amen. Agendas, only God's agenda is, is the thing that's pushing, and everything that's being lifted is going to scholarships. We, we, we're about missions. We're about service for it into the next generation. Amen? Amen? So we bless the Lord. How many of you guys are ready for the word? How many of you are ready for the word of this black history, uh, this black history month? Come on, give God some praise if you're ready for the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I want to get your attention even as we shift our focus on this morning to First Peter, Old Testament text. I'm sorry, New Testament text. First Peter 4, fourth chapter. And I want to look at a few verses. First Peter 4, 12 through 19. And the word of the Lord helps us in this way. Hallelujah. The Bible says, beloved, wow, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. Listen to the word of God. Verse 13 says, But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. Verse 14 If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed. Somebody type, I'm blessed. Come on, somebody just write, I'm blessed. Somebody just say, I'm blessed. Because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. Verse 15, but let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers, as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. Verse 17, for it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved what will become of the ungodly and the sinner. Finally, verse 19, therefore let those who suffer according to God's will 
and trust their souls to the faithful creator while doing good. For the Lord has already blessed. I, I want to preach from the part saved and suffering. Hallelujah. Saved and suffering. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord our God. Saved and suffering. Family, as we consider Black History Month, all that our ancestors had to endure, we can count it all joy now because we get to enjoy the benefits of what they suffered through, of their suffrage. We, we benefited. And I don't want to let, let somebody know that somebody sacrificed for us to live the kind of lifestyles that we are living. God calls parenthetically and say, some of us are living in houses that our great grandmothers and grandfathers would have been called to clean. Lord have mercy. So some of us are driving cars right now that, that we would only have been good enough to chauffeur or to keep clean for somebody else. But because of someone else's suffrage, because of someone else's sacrifice, we're able to have what we have, to live where we live, eat where we eat, drive what we drive, but somebody had to suffer in order for us to have what we have. Hallelujah. And can somebody say, thank you, Lord? Thank you, Lord. The cold night of slavery, segregation, integration of schools and restaurants, the redlining of neighborhoods, come on, subpar housing and ghettos. Come on, some of us grew up, didn't even know we were poor. Come on, the underrepresented in the legal system. Need I go on Jim Crow, Plessy versus Ferguson, the bus boy cops, the, the march on Washington. I, how about this one? Bloody Sunday. Anybody remember? I'm just taking a stroll down black history and suffrage, equal road voter rights rallies, even recently Black Lives Matter rallies and demonstrations. Much has been sacrificed. Much has been given, yet much has been taken. Lord, help me preach this the way I feel it, Holy Spirit. The, 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 the question arises, how can I be saved and still suffer. I, I don't know how can I be faithful in season and out of season and still God call me to suffer. And I want to let you know because God is sovereign. I ain't expect any amens on social media. Come on. But, but, but God is sovereign. Come on. God is proving himself. God is stretching us. God has called us not to be cowardly and comfortable, but he's called us to be courageous and often he allows suffrage to agitate us to take the leap of faith that we never would have taken except the Lord would allow some suffering to come out on our door. What you think about it. If, if you never had a problem, you'd never know that God could solve it. If, if you never knew, hallelujah, what prayer could do when your back was up against the wall, and I, I want to help you today, uh, sir, I want to help you today, ma'am, that, that oftentimes life will not be a bed of roses. Come on, every day won't be like Sunday. Come on, but you're going to have some hard days. You're going to have some sleepless nights. You're going to have some aches and pains in your body. But the Bible says, count it all joy. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can, can you give God praise? Can, can you give God praise even in suffering? Are you mature enough to say, if it's God's will, it's his will, and if he brought me to it, he'll see me through it. He alone holds the power in his hands. Do you trust God with your life? Do you trust him with the sustenance of who you are? He alone decides what he can, what we can and cannot endure. Family, let me hurry on before I lose this crowd. Suffering is an unpopular subject. Yet the Lord called me to preach it right now. Salvation, Lord have mercy, is more pleasant than suffering. Preach on, Dr. Jackson. Heaven is more pleasant than the heartache, Brother Hart. Reverend, Reverend Whitley, suffering is a real part of life. Hallelujah, sisters on every hospital we pass says that suffering is real. Y'all not hearing this. Reverend Gray, screaming sirens running up and down the street each and every night says that suffering is real. Brother Lord, not only physical, but mental anguish is real. People are hurting. People are suffering, and yet it is God's will that suffering take place. Christians, believers, also have trials. We are not exempt. I, I can remember like it was yesterday, like a little boy sitting in the back of the church hearing the preacher say, if you are not in a storm, you're coming out of one. If you're not coming out of a storm and you're not in one, then you're headed for a storm. It doesn't matter where you are in your journey, suffering is very much a part of God's salvific plan. Hallelujah for all of us sometimes in order for us to grow. If you're right, write this first point down. It's not strange that believers have trials. I'm going to write that down. It's not strange when, when, when we have trials. Verse 12 says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you. Why? To test you as though something is strange were happening to you. Well, some of us like to play the victim. Many of us are always pointing the finger, saying, why is someone picking at me? Why is someone always attacking me? Some thought that salvation meant no more trials. The devil is a liar, but, but it's not an easy road we are traveling on. On the way to heaven, you're going to experience some pain. Sometimes. Come on, preach on, preach on. I've got to remind myself of this very thing. Hallelujah. Believers have trials because we live in a sin-sick world. Hallelujah. We, we, we Deacon Anderson, are a part of a fallen race. Talking about the human race. Our world wars and rumors of wars, a world of tornadoes and a world of earthquakes, a world where sin runs rampant and greed, hallelujah, brings about violence. Some people kill their own mother for a dollar. Christians have trials because of the power of Satan. Hallelujah. We, we have an adversary. I preached about it a few weeks ago. Ephesians 6, 11 through 12. Uh, see the very work of Satan 
on the household of Job. Nobody is exempt. No one is above trouble. Don't be surprised when the attacks of Satan happen. Don't be surprised when he attacks you. Believers have trials because we are on a collision course with this world. There's no way around it. Being totally transparent, hallelujah. When I got the diagnosis uh, toward the end of November, I think we were in December, that Pastor, you too have COVID-19. I said, but I've been vaccinated. Come on, I'm washed in the blood. I'm coming. I'm I'm God's man, and God said, "You still got to try. You still got to trust. You still got to lean in and depend on me. Nobody is exempt from suffering." Hallelujah! Why? Why? Jesus, what was despised and rejected, according to John fifteen? Come on, Jesus had some trials, preacher on that, that his life was in opposition to the course of this world. Therefore, through the centuries, here it is, thank you, Lord, believers have also suffered. Yes, that the, 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 the scriptures replete with, 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 with names that will never be called of people who died because of their beliefs. Hallelujah. Book of Hebrews, thank you, Holy Spirit. Hebrews 11, that their names that will never be called who trusted God and suffered because of their beliefs and yet it brought glory and honor to God. Somebody just say they suffered. They suffered, they, they, they suffered. My, my uncle, hallelujah, uh, my, my mother's baby brother, Uncle James, whatever death or trouble came knocking, he, he would lean into me and say, baby boy, it's your turn. And I said, what a cruel thing to say. He being a bully again. He beating up, baby. He beat me up again. But, but what he was doing was preparing me for the harshness of life. And we can't have it our way like Burger King. Hallelujah. We, we simply have to learn to abide. Somebody just say abide, abide. John 15, teaches us to abide in the will of God and to trust that he knows what's best for me, Lord have mercy. I'm almost where I want to be. We got to learn to trust and, and know that God is in control. We got to trust that if he brought me to it, he'll lead me through it. You got to trust that, that although I'm in a wilderness place, the Lord promised to never leave me nor forsake me. It's not strange that believers have trials. Well, point number two, the believer's trials are different. Lord have mercy. Come on, come somebody say, I ain't just out here by myself. The believer's trial is different. Verse 13 and 14 say, but rejoice in so far as you share Deacon Jackson Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. Hallelujah. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed. Come on, somebody say, I'm blessed. Because the spirit of the glory of God rests upon me. Hallelujah. Come on, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Come on, he's anointed me to preach the gospel. Yes, I'm saved. And sometimes I got to suffer. Hallelujah. But it's for God's desires. It's, it's for his plan. It's, it's for his glory. Hallelujah. Can I give you an example for those of you who are Black History Month? I, I feel liberated today. Now, never would I ever applaud and accept critical race theory. Some of y'all know where I'm going. Uh -huh. As being just the way that it is. I, I can't accept that. They take things on the way that they are. Blacks 
will always be oppressed. No, but I believe God knows, and I believe God sees the evil in this world. world. I, I, I believe God, God is aware, and, 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 and whether or not, come on, you want to say it or not, microaggression is real. Lord have mercy. Outright racism is apparent. And, and, and suffering is still suffering. However, for the believer, help me, Holy Ghost, we do not suffer alone. Come on, that's good news for somebody. Come on, we don't suffer alone, but, but we bear each other's burdens. We share each other's sorrows. We pray for one another. We get strength from each other's testimony. Other believers stand with you in your suffering. Hallelujah. He, he has the day of glory ahead, according to Romans 8 and 18. Romans 8 and 18 says, Paul is writing, for I consider, Reverend, that the sufferings at this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that will be revealed in us. Come on, I gotta suffer sometimes, but, but it doesn't even compare to the glory. Somebody shout glory. Come on, somebody open up your mouth, throw out your head, and shout glory. He can find joy, the believer, even in jeopardy. Acts 16 and 25 says, and suddenly uh, uh, there was a great earthquake uh, so that the foundations uh, of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open. Lord have mercy. And, and everyone's bonds were unfastened. Listen, Paul and Silas were giving God praise, not because of their bonds, but while they were in their bonds, they still gave God praise. They gave God praise in their circumstances. The believer can rejoice even when he's reproached. Come here, Matthew. Matthew 5 and 11 says, Blessed are you. When others will revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. We suffer differently. We, we go through different, we go through for different reasons. Even in the believer's darkest hour, hallelujah, Christ is still moving. Christ is still fashioning. Christ is still working on the inside of him. It's not strange. I'm almost done. That, that believers have trials. The, the, the believers, trials, hallelujah. They're, they're different. But, but finally, as we close this thing out and get ready to go home, uh, here it is. Sometimes, Lord, have mercy, but the believers bring suffering upon themselves. <laughs> so sometimes, as a believer, I can say my hand got stuck in the cookie jar. Sometimes I've been guilty of doing what Satan said I did. But Jesus, my advocate, Jesus, my righteous redeemer, lifts up his nails, God hands, and said it paid for in full. Lord, I thank you right here. Uh, can I help somebody? Some of the trials that you find yourself in, you put yourself there. Some of the money that you don't have, uh, you threw it out the window uh, a long time ago. Uh, the, the reason why you don't have no fellowship uh, in your home, man of God, is because you decided to stop following God yourself. Uh, so God says, uh, if you can't do it my way, Follow you. But I'm so glad, and I'm so glad that we are 
are not ashamed uh, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, we are not ashamed uh, that when we did it, uh, we don't have to read it, uh, but we can own it. Uh, and we can say, it's me, uh, it's me, oh Lord. Uh, standing in the need of prayer. Uh, not my mother, not my father, uh, not my sister. Uh, ourselves in the trouble. Y'all yeah, don't believe me. It is in the word. Verses 15 through 19 says, but let none of you suffer as a murderer. We murder people's character with our mouths. Let none of you suffer as a thief. We, we steal ideas and claim them like they are our own. Lord have mercy. Uh, let, let none of us suffer as evildoers, as meddlers. Some of us can't mind our own business to save our lives. For, for it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. He hear my heart today. Many of us have had to suffer, but, but it was not unto death. Thank you, Holy Spirit, God. Many of us have been chastised. Hallelujah. Why? Because the Lord loves us. Hallelujah. We, we, we're called, we're saved, and yet we're suffering. We're, we're, we're suffering because God's reputation is on the line. He, he's identified with our lives. Some of us and act like we don't even connect with God. This is a word for introspection. This is a word to take a look at what you're doing because God has not called any of us to be hypocrites. There's room in this message even for the preacher. Come on, I can't be the star and cook. God is trying to accomplish some things in the earth. Sometimes the passage suffering. We're not the only ones who've had to endure. We're not the only ones who had to suffer. We're not the only ones who've been lied on, talked about. But suffering will bring God glory later on. Psalm 30 and 5 says, for his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. We can suffer now, but experience his glory even in suffering. My word to you today is make the necessary life changes to avoid suffering unnecessary issues. We're not the first to endure suffering, but I wouldn't be a good Baptist preacher if I didn't say that there was another. That there was another who endured death, even the death of the cross, in order to give us life. We're talking about the one and only Son of Jesus Christ. Jesus suffered. He suffered abandonment. He suffered. Jesus suffered injustice, family. He, he suffered. Y'all still with me? He, he suffered brutality and lies being told about his name. He suffered. He, he suffered being beaten beyond the point of recognition. He was beaten with, with the cat of nine tails and, and as flesh is written from his blood. He suffered. He suffered from the thorns being placed upon his head. He suffered nails in his hands. Nails in his feet. He suffered even being mocked by a guilty thief that should have died. He was mocked even in death. He suffered. He suffered. His father turned his face and said, Father, why have you forsaken me? Jesus suffered. 
But that's not how the story ends because in three days he rose again with keys to death, keys to the grave in his hand and he was elevated and given a name that's above every name and at the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. We're saved and we suffer, but God gets the glory. Can somebody give God glory? Can somebody give God praise that Jesus suffered and now we live? Come on, we live a life knowing that he is with us. Brother Hart, can you bless us as we close out? I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Is there anybody that can say, I'm so glad? Jesus lifted me when I was in trouble. Jesus lifted me glory. Hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Hallelujah. I'm so glad. Mm -hmm. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. Jesus lifted me. Jesus into their life. 
a need, oh God, to really trust, really depend, really be transformed. These people are functioning addicts of one sort or another. Some are control freaks, some have addiction, some are in denial, but we cast all of our cares upon you, O oh God, knowing that you care for us. So even in this virtual space touch, people looking for a church home virtually, let Ebenezer be a place where the word of God flows freely and meets a practical need in everyone's life, God, we pray. We pray for transformation. Transformation for men and women, children and youth and young adults. God, we pray for seniors to be empowered to know that they can still be used for God's glory. God, we thank you for what our ears have heard, what our hearts have felt, and what our hands shall do. Bless us today as we continue to run this race, knowing that the best is still yet to come. Bless us, we pray, in the mighty and also name of Jesus the Christ. We say together, amen. 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 Come on, give God some praise. Amen. Amen. If you want prayer, or if you want to be connected with our new discipleship ministry, it's waiting to connect with you today. You can write it in the chat, hallelujah, or you can call 703 836 9568 or new discipleship ministry EBC 909 at gmail.com. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May He cause His face to shine upon you and bless you as you continue to walk in His will and way. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah.